start with Jesus every day. Mom and my moment in work and play. I'm a start in life and starting out right. Starting with Jesus, it is a delight. Starting with Jesus, day and night. Starting with Jesus, I'm starting out right. Hello boys and girls, welcome to Starting with Jesus, where we want to encourage you to start everything you do with Jesus. Today's story with Miss Michelle is an exciting one about seven special helpers. And I'm really excited to find out who those seven special helpers were. So let's get to that story, but before we do that, I want you to join us in some singing praises to Jesus. Sutton and we are missionaries in Belize but when we were moving to Belize we didn't have a place to live have any of you ever not had a home where you could live well sometimes that might be kind of scary so my children and I we begin to pray every day that Jesus would provide a house that was in the country and number two I pray that Jesus would give us a house with a tiled bathroom and I know that sounds kind of funny but sometimes these houses in these other countries their bathrooms are just cement and it can get really gross and you can't clean any of the mess up in there very well. And when we got to Belize, we began to look for a house to live in. And one of the houses that we thought might be an opportunity for us to live in, we realized, you know what? They just rented it the day before and it was right in the village. And I thought to myself, you know what? When we lived in Bolivia, we had to live in the city for a year and a half and I don't ever want to have to live in the city again. 
And so I said, no, let's look a little more. And there was another house across the street. And we went inside the house and we looked and the house was very dirty. There were clothes all over the place. And we went up the stairs and there were all of these little tiny rooms. And whenever we went, I looked into the room. Do you know what was on the floor in the room? There was rat mess and there was bat mess. And there were a whole bunch of rooms and all of them were full of all those things. And I thought, Oh, I said, God, I don't want to be picky, but this is gross. And when I walked downstairs, I looked into the bathroom and in the bathroom, it was dark and it was really dirty and there was no tile in the bathroom. And I went into the kitchen and there were lots of dirty dishes that had been there for a really long time. And my friend who was going to be staying with us, she said, well, we can clean the house. And I said, no, I don't want to live in this house. And I started to cry. And my husband said, honey, you've never cried before. And we've lived in many places and you've always been okay. I said, I would rather build a hut out in the jungle and sleep in the jungle, but I don't want to live in this dirty house. So he said, okay, we won't live in this house. And so we kept looking and we drove down another road and we saw a house way up on stilts. It was so high on stilts that you could walk under the house and I could reach up as tall as I could reach and I couldn't even touch the bottom of the house. And I thought, hmm, let's see if we can look in this house because this house is in the country. And so we went asking around and we finally found the dad of the man that owned this house. And he said, well, this house isn't finished, but you can look at it and see if you want to stay in it. So we went and the outside of this house was not very pretty. It was needed to be painted and it was a really small house. But I said, mm, let's look inside. So we walked up the stairs and do you know what was in the kitchen? Nothing. It was just a room. There wasn't any place to put a sink. There was nothing in there. And then I walked into one of the bedrooms and there were no doors on the bedrooms. And I walked into the bathroom and do you know what I found in the bathroom? You're never going to believe it. I found a tiled bathroom. And I said, this is just the house for us. God provided the two things that we asked for. And that was a tiled bathroom and to live in the country. So I want to encourage you, if you have to leave your house or whatever you have to leave behind, God knows just exactly what we need and he will provide what we need. Oh, hey everyone. I was just thinking about all the different countries and places there are in our world. A lot of them, right? Yeah, and you guys know Miss Michelle lives in the United States, but we just had some friends who moved to Malawi, and we have friends all over different places too, right? Or who used to live in different places around the world and now live close by us. Today's story talks about that and how the new church, the church in the book of Acts, dealt with having people from all different places. Pretty interesting. Let's pray and ask God to be with us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for being here with us now. Thank you for creating this amazing worldwide family of people who believe in you and follow you, Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit to be with them wherever they are around the world where they're watching right now. Thank you for loving us, and we can't wait until we all can be together in heaven. In your name we pray, amen. Well, I'm going to put this down for a second <clears throat> and talk about our lesson for today, which is called Seven Special Helpers. Satan was doing all he could to stop it, but he couldn't. What was it? The growth of the Christian church in Jerusalem. Now, they weren't even called Christians yet, but they would be in the future, right? And... One interesting verse caught my eye in today's lesson, and it was in Acts 2, verse 5. It says, And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. Every nation? Wow! There are a lot of different nations under heaven, right? Which means all the different countries all over the world. Now, one of the things that I like to also do is reminisce or remember and think about the past. Because I've taught at some really cool schools and gone to some really cool schools. And when I get in the mood, I start to look at my old yearbooks. And I think about all the kids I went to school with when I was a kid. And all the kids that I've gotten to teach. And about how everyone was different. They were from all different places, maybe different places around the U.S. or around the world, and about how we all brought something really important and special to each classroom that we were a part of. But because we were all from different places and we all had different backgrounds, we might 
eat different kinds of foods in our lunches, or maybe even could speak a different language. I had one student who could speak three languages, and boy was I jealous because I thought that was really cool that he could speak three languages. And maybe you have different traditions in your family because you're from different places, or maybe you have different preferences or things that you like to do because of where you're from or where your family was from. And that is a really cool thing, right? Those differences should be celebrated. But sometimes when there are differences, it makes it easier or harder sometimes to get along. Well, it could be easy or it could be harder, right? It depends. But Jesus' followers were getting along so well and it was going really well. Not because they were like superhuman and just great people and even though they were different, they just always got along and everything was perfect. No, no, no because the Holy Spirit was with them. The best helper had been sent to them and he was keeping them on track and focused on sharing Jesus. Because if we're focused on the right thing, Jesus, then those other things are not so distracting, right? Jesus, when he was here on this earth, he treated everybody the same. It didn't matter where you were from, your background. He didn't see some people as more important than other people. He saw everyone as a child of God. And that's how we should see other people too, right? No one is better than anyone else. Sounds like perfect, like we were talking about, right? And this made Satan upset. In fact, Satan got downright angry because things were not going according to his plan. Nope, not one bit. And he wanted to spoil this peace and happiness that was abounding in the new church. So we go to Acts chapter 2, verse 44. Now those who believed were together and had all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all people as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And Satan saw this and it made him yeah, not happy. So he made a new plan. He had to improvise, right? And he thought, this is, <laughs> no, <laughs> not working out. Well, it's working out too well for Jesus, not so well for me. And so he came up with a plan. You see, in the church of Jerusalem, like we said, there were Jews from all over the world. And some of the Jews had grew up speaking Greek due to where they were from, where they grew up. And we call them Grecians. Or some people, you might see the word Hellenist, and you're like, Hellenist? What, Miss Michelle? What did you say now? No, no, no. Hellenist means from Hellas, which was the name of, for ancient Greece. Back then, that's what they called it. We don't call it that now, but that's what they called it, Hellas. We'll call them the Grecians for today. And there was that group of Jews, and then that was a big group in Jerusalem. Then there were the Hebrew Jews, who spoke Hebrew and had grown up there in Jerusalem. And um, before everyone became followers of Jesus, there was a tendency for people to be a bit, um, these two groups to be suspicious of each other. Like, oh, what are they up to? I don't know if I completely trust them, right? Suspicious means you don't trust someone and you're kind of just watching them to see when they're gonna mess up, right? That's kind of what that means, suspicious. And Satan thought, hmm, they used to do that. And have you ever heard the expression, old habits die hard? Yes, sometimes when we have a habit, it is hard to get rid of. And so he thought, hmm, maybe I can get them to slip back into that old way of thinking where they're going at each other instead of focusing on Jesus. Satan still does this today, folks. He has us take little issues that are not as important and focus on those things and fight about them instead of focusing on Jesus. It's all about him, folks. It's all about him. So the Grecians started to get suspicious and started to imagine some things that maybe they were happening, but I don't think they were happening. It didn't seem like they were from what the Bible says. Um, and they were just kind of imagining that the Hebrews were Hebrew Jews were being treated better, especially their widows. They're like, this is not cool. Their widows are being treated better than our widows. This is not fair. Everyone should be equal in God's eyes, right? Which we agree with. We pick up the story in Acts chapter 6. Let me flip on over here. Acts chapter 6 says, Now in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose 
You didn't know multiplication was in the Bible, did you? Oh, it sure is. That's the math teacher in me, sorry. There arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, the Grecians, right? That the, and against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. That was their claim. And when the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. What does this mean? Did they not care about this? Oh, no, they cared. However, there are only so many hours in the day, right? Only so much time to get things done in the day. And they were saying, we're feeling overwhelmed, right? What did they say, though? It's not desirable that we should leave the word of God. Their job was to spread the word of God, that we should serve tables. We don't have time to make sure that, you know, we count out the jelly beans and everybody gets exactly five and we count out, you know, every single little thing and it's exactly perfect. There's not enough time in, the, in our day for that. I mean, there's 12 of us, but there's still, there's just so many people to tell about Jesus. We can't, we're feeling overwhelmed, right? And so they felt sad. They felt sad that this was even happening because they could tell that this was going to be a problem and that this could grow into a bigger problem for the church. So they did what they knew to do. They prayed. They prayed for the Holy Spirit's guidance to know what to do. And they said, Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and full of wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. They thought, we need some help. Like, we cannot deal with all these issues, right? The drama is just too much. We need some help. And that's when the Holy Spirit led them to choose, how many it said? Seven men of good reputation. And we continue reading. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So what were the disciples' jobs? What were they supposed to be focusing on? They were supposed to be focusing on preaching, teaching people, praying, and studying. That was their main job. Who does that sound like in your church? Kind of sounds like the pastor to me, right? They like to preach. They teach people about God. They have a lot of prayer time that goes into it, and they study, especially to make their sermon or to know how to answer people's questions. And they were too busy to coordinate things like food and clothing, right? That's why they appointed how many men? Seven men. And these they called deacons. Let's keep reading. Um, and in verse 5, and saying, then the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Par Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed and they laid their hands on them, they dedicated them to this purpose. Then the word of the Lord spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the, get this, priests were obedient to the faith. How exciting! I think that's amazing, right? So, what were the deacons to do? Well, they were to do the other things, the things that weren't the disciples' jobs, which was preaching, teaching, praying, and studying. The deacons were to do the other duties of the church, for instance, caring for the people and doing different things around the church to keep things going, right? They had their dedication service. They were appointed seven men. And let's reread um, verse 3 one more time. Seven men of what? There were three things that you needed to qualify to be a deacon, and I think this would still apply today. A good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit, and full of wisdom. Those are the three things that they needed to have, and those all sound super important to me. What's a reputation? A reputation is what you're known for. So when someone says your name at church or somewhere, what do they immediately think of? Do they think, oh yeah, that, that um, young man, uh, he's really helpful. Or, ooh, that young woman, I really like how she says the prayer in front of church. It's really powerful when she talks to Jesus. Or, mm, that, that young man, he has a hard time not talking to his friends during church. Or, mm, that young woman, I've seen her do something that wasn't very honest. It's what you're known for. So having a good reputation was an important part of being a deacon. Being full of the Holy Spirit, well, that's obvious. This was a huge and very important part of what was happening in the early church. And being full of wisdom. They needed to be able to help people solve problems and be full of wisdom. Now, do we still have deacons and deaconesses today? We sure do. And you might want to interview one and see what some of their jobs are. That would be a great assignment to do. 
Check and see who your deacons or deaconesses are. Maybe your mom or dad or aunt or uncle or grandma or grandpa are one. And you could ask them what they do. And I have even better news. A lot of churches have what we call junior deacons and junior deaconesses, which means very soon you could help serve as a deacon or a deaconess in your church. How cool would that be? And in so doing, you could help spread the love of Jesus and help the pastors to be able to focus what they need to focus on and help the church to grow, help your church to grow. I think that would be amazing. Well, that's all the time we have for today. So I'll see you next week. Take care and God bless. I start my day by spreading my bed and pray. Thank you so much for that Bible story, Miss Michelle. And I think most of you know what time it is. That's right. It's time to review the questions from last week. And I wonder what those questions were. Oh, I know what those questions were. And I also know that somebody, some of you sent in your answers. And I'm really excited because we're going to get to see those shout outs. Shout out to Alex, Isaiah, Skyler, Ray, Ariel, Jason, Hadassah, Emery, Savannah, Ashley, Amy, Isaiah, Julia, Faith, Danny, Hannah, Elathan, Benny, Danny, Daniel, Mia, Christian, Lizzie, Ethan, Sydney, Caleb, Colton, Anne, Charles, Arthur, David, Evie, Abigail, Dom, Ellie, Denny, Analia, Benji, Clarice, Abigail, and Amari. Great job answering your questions. Now it's time for our new questions. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to grab a piece of paper and grab a pen or grab a computer so you can type on with your parents' permission and type those questions down and type those answers down and send them to us at answers at startingwithjesus.com so that you can be included in our weekly shout outs. And for those of you who might be watching on 3ABN or other programs, you can view those shout outs and memory verses if you go and watch our program at startingwithjesus.com. You'll see the shout out if you are in there. So check it out. Are you ready for your new questions? Question number one. What were the seven new helpers called? What were the seven new helpers called? Question number two. What? were the jobs of these helpers. What did these helpers do? And question number three. Do we still have these kind of helpers in our churches today? Do we still have these kind of helpers in our churches today? Now, where can you send those answers? That's right, answers at startingwithjesus.com and check out your shout out in next week's lesson. This week's memory verse is found in 1 Corinthians 14:40, and it says, let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently, decently and in order. Let all things be done decently, decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all yeah. things be done decently and in order. First Corinthians fourteen forty. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done in decency and order.
I need a helper. Can you help me? Yes. Good. We're going to make some peanut butter balls. We're going to start with some peanut butter. I already have one cup of peanut butter measured out. Do you want to help? Okay, let's take this peanut butter and put it right in the bowl. Okay, after the peanut butter, we need to put in some flax, two tablespoons of flax. One, two. Next, we're going to put in a cup of powdered soy milk. Stir it up. And the last thing we need is some crisp rice cereal. Can you help me with the crisp rice cereal? Can you smash the cereal down? Good job. Keep smashing. Okay, we're going to put these two cups of crisp rice cereal that we've smashed in with our other ingredients. Do you want to pour it in? Thank you for helping me stir it. You're welcome. Thank you for helping me make them. It's nice to have help when you do things, isn't it? Did you know that the Bible talks about the early church in Acts and how the early church had helpers? They did. People were asked to help keep the early church organized. They each had jobs and things to do. Are there helpers at your church? Elders, deacons and deaconesses, pastors and secretaries, treasurers, Sabbath school teachers, Sabbath school assistants, there's lots of helpers at church. Can you be a helper at your church too? Mm-hmm. What kinds of things could you do to help at your church? I do know. Could you help pull weeds during the week to keep the church looking nice? Mm -hmm. Or pick up trash when you see it on the floor? Maybe you can help collect offering or help the Sabbath school teacher pass things out. We all can be helpers around our church. Okay, let's turn these into balls. Yeah. Set the spatula aside. This part is where our hands get a little dirty. Sometimes you get dirty when you help. Put a little in our hands and we turn it into a ball. We'll set it on the plate. Once we're done making all of the balls, we'll put it in the fridge for an hour. They'll get hardened and then we can eat them. What a yummy snack. You could make this yummy snack at home with your family. And I hope when you help your family learn how to make peanut butter balls, you'll remember that you can also help around your church. There's always something you can do to be a helper. Thank you so much for watching. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much that you ask us to be your helpers, that we can help you in your great plans in all of this world. I pray that we will be willing helpers that we will do whatever you ask us to do. That even if it seems like, well, I'm not as important as this other person, that's not true. Every one of us is so important and every one of us has a special job that needs to be done. We thank you that we have a special job and a special work that we can do. Help us to do that and we love you in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed week and keep in touch.